Hey and welcome to this video. This time I'm going to show you my workflow for storing and archiving my footage and projects. Uh, this is a topic that's been keeping me busy for a while because there are so many ways to do it. So I set out to find the best solution. My requirements to a backup solution were it should be easy to use. Uh, it should be silent when editing. I really don't like the loud drives, especially not on my desk. The solution should provide data redundancy for two years and I want to keep the files for a total of four years. I plan to shoot about 10 terabytes per year, so the solution should also hold up against this uh, amount of data. When I go on a shoot, I bring an SSD to offload files from my memory cards and I create an on-location backup. Back at my desk, I create another copy of the files on a large 10TB drive, which is called 2021 for this year and it serves me as my main yearly backup drive. Now I can format the memory card and start editing. I also use the SSD when I'm back at the office for editing, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't need to copy my files from an SSD to another editing drive. Uh, since the files are already on the SSD, why not just use them and edit straight from there? Then second, it is absolutely silent. Also, the SSD is much faster than a classic hard drive. Um, to be fair, a classic hard drive will definitely be enough for editing, but when it comes to copying files, the SSD is much faster. When I'm done editing, I resync the editing drive with my main backup drive. To sync drives, I use an awesome tool called Chronosync. Chronosync compares the files you have on your A drive, which is for example the SSD, with the B drive, the main backup drive. And it just adds the new files and the files that have been changed. Now my backups are synced. I would like to use the SSD of course now for other projects, but before I erase it, I create another backup on a second 10TB drive. Now it's safe to format the SSD and all of my data from the year 2021 is redundant and safe. I now maintain redundancy for two years before I format one of the drives. The main drive for the year 2021 I'll keep for two more years before it's also erased and can be used again. With this kind of driver cycling workflow I need a total of eight drives and I can start the cycle again. It's easy to use and the files are stored safely, but of course it has some weak spots. Let's say a client wants you to do changes to a project from last year. First step is to grab the main backup drive from last year and copy all the files to an editing drive. Now you can do changes to the files, uh, maybe add new ones and as the project is finished again, you resync the editing drive to the main backup drive and then you also resync your backup drive to the second backup drive. That just seems a bit inefficient and uh, over the years you end up with uh, quite a lot of drives. So what other options do we have? Let's begin with cloud storage. Uh, I'm sure you know Backblaze, it's very easy to use uh, and it's cheap. So here's a great option to integrate cloud storage into your file management workflow. We also start with creating an on-location backup on an SSD, then we back up to a 10TB main drive for that year and we edit on the SSD before it's resynced to the backup again. That part remains the same, but now we create our backup of the files on the cloud. Backblaze makes this quite easy. You just define which drive you want it to back up and it does that when plugged in. And every time you do that, it analyzes the drive and it adds new files or changed files. You now keep the main drive again for two years. After two years, the copy of the files on the cloud can be deleted and you just keep the main drive for another two years before you erase it and use it again. Here we can also recycle drives, but we need only five of them in total. But here's the catch. Uh, if you use Backblaze like this, the drive you want to be synced needs to be connected to your computer once every 30 days. If you don't do that, all the files will be deleted from the cloud. But considering that you only keep one drive per year, I think that's realistic to do. And uh, you could also set a reminder so you don't forget to resync it. 
This of course means you need to be around regularly and also you should have a fast internet connection but it's a very easy workflow and you only need five drives to keep the cycle going and uh, of course a Backblaze account. Now let's continue with RAID storage. This could be directly attached storage or network attached storage. Uh, maybe you don't like the idea of having tons of drives around and new drives each year. So you could store your data on a big RAID storage. Let's take a RAID 5 system with four drives, 12 terabytes each. That'll give you 36 terabytes of usable storage. At the end of 2023, you'll have to offload the footage from 2021 to an external 10 terabyte drive. This one you'll keep for two years in total before it's erased and can be used again. This way you maintain redundancy for two years and you store the footage for four years. So one big RAID storage and two additional drives only to keep the cycle going. Quite simple, but also quite a lot of money to spend initially. And we'll get to the cost right now. I wanted to know how much it would cost me to store my projects four years after I shot them. I've split the cost into initial investment and total cost. Let's begin with my current workflow, hard drives only. Within the first three years, no drives are erased. So no recycling yet. That means two new drives at each 300 a year. After three years, the reusing begins and we only need to buy one new drive a year for two years. After that, I'll own eight discs and the cycle can start again. So no more buying discs until a disc breaks, of course. That's an initial investment of 600 and a total cost of 2400. Now to the second workflow with single drives and cloud storage. Here I need to purchase only one drive a year. The rest is backed up by the cloud service for $60 a year. After five years I have five drives and I can start using them again and I will only pay for the cloud backup. The initial investment is 360 including Backblaze and the total cost is 1800. Now the RAID storage will look a bit different because of the initial investment. For a RAID storage like this you'll pay about 2000 US. But then you're done buying stuff until you need the 10 terabyte drives which is only two pieces at 300 each. That's it. The initial investment will be 2000 and the total cost is 2600. So in comparison definitely the most expensive of the three workflows. So yeah, storing and archiving footage is definitely not free, but it's a part of our professional work. And if you're smart, why don't you charge your clients for it? Um, the way I do it, if I create a new quote, I just um, guess how much data a shoot will generate. And based on that, I charge a price for file management and storage. That really depends on your internet connection, your budget and also your workload. If you have a good internet connection and you don't have a huge budget, definitely consider this option. It doesn't come with high initial cost and you can upgrade year by year. If your internet connection is shit or you just don't trust the cloud, maybe consider this one. It's a bit more expensive, but you can also upgrade over time. If you have a budget to spend and you know you're gonna produce tons and tons of footage each year, you might consider the rate storage. I personally will go for the workflow with single drives and cloud storage. In fact, my iMac is right now uploading almost five terabytes of data to the cloud. Let's see how long that takes. I'll test this workflow and uh, I might do a new video in a couple of months. So that's it for now. I really hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos.